Welcome to day 547 of our Web3 journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein, here with my twin brother, Brian. And remember, these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in DSOFI. And DSOFI is a Web3 mobile app built on the DSO blockchain. So, Brian, it's looking like a hurricane might hit us next week. What is it? Tropical Storm Ian right now? And it's direct. Its path is directly at Fort Myers, Florida. So it looks like we could get a it's, direct. They hit. moved it a little bit north of us, so we might luck out. It but. might hit Michelle Lord. Hopefully not. Yeah. But so Brian and I went out to buy a bunch of gasoline yesterday, so that we have it for our gas power generator, so that we can keep an AC unit going, keep our refrigerator and freezers going in case we lose electricity, like we did a few years ago in another hurricane. So, but what happens if we don't need to use that gasoline? Where do we put it? Our vehicles use premium gas, so the regular gas probably wouldn't be the best for that. We do have a boat, so we could put the gas in the boat. But I'm thinking I'll probably use it in my power washer and start power washing things, clean things up, you know, my driveway needs to be cleaned, etc. But I didn't even think of the idea of cleaning my GPUs with a power washer. Yeah, so this is a crazy story, and, and this Twitter account leaked this. Uh, it's a I leak Vietnam Twitter account, and it's actually a video. As, as you know, first of all, a backstory, backstory here. The theory emerged. It basically cuts out proof of work, meaning you don't need these high-powered GPUs in order to mine Ethereum. So all these miners, especially in Asia, uh, are getting rid of their GPUs and selling them on the market and, and trying to get some money back. But what they're doing, a lot of these GPUs are dirty. They've been in these warehouses for possibly years mining Ethereum and other cryptos. And they want to sell them, but they want to sell them as like new instead of highly used. So what they're doing is they're taking these power washers and washing these racks of GPUs. Obviously, this isn't the best thing. You can see the dirt coming off of them. It, they're getting clean, but the water could easily get stuck behind some of these components and not evaporate. And then when you plug it in, <laughs> blow, the, blow the GPU. Uh, the power washer, obviously, it's powerful. So it could also damage these components within these GPUs. So case in point, I think you got to be very careful if you're buying a GPU, thinking, oh, I'm getting such a great deal on this lightly used, almost like new GPU, when there's a very good chance that it could have literally been power washed. Yeah, incredible. Like something I wouldn't have ever thought about is power washing my GPUs. But hey, if it works, I guess, I don't know. I mean, I would assume that water would get stuck in between like a a plastic component or like a metal component and not be able to escape and evaporate. And then you turn it on and you short it out. But I guess that doesn't happen. I don't know. Yeah, I, it's crazy. Anyhow, moving on, uh, Natter. Yesterday he had his talk at Missouri Mainnet in New York. Ton of big people on. His talk was on the main stage, same stage that uh, Vitalik from Ethereum was on and many other huge people who, you know, the crypto and blockchain world looks up to. Uh, he talked a lot about these, so it only lasted 15 minutes, but I think he got he did a great job. Oh, and by the way, it looks like he's been working out because I, he looked pretty jacked in some of his uh, photos in the video. Uh, but he talked about why DSO is is so, has so much potential. He said it only needs one single killer app uh, because that's going to create a seed of users and content on chain that's needed. Uh, he said developers follow users and content, and this provides an incentive to build on DSO. And, and then there's no cold start problem because there's already the users there when you want to develop on the on the blockchain. You don't want to worry about creating a new social media app and then finding a way to get users when the users are already participating in that database that your app or website would use. Uh, he said that more developers equal more killer apps, and more killer apps equal more users and content. And that's something that I think is really important. Uh, DSO improves moderation. This is something he talked about. It improves moderation and makes things more transparent and collaborative. 
Content is open for top researchers and machine learning. So you're no longer relying on Twitter's top execs deciding what content should be moderated, what should be removed. You can kind of allow third parties to do it. You can allow colleges and universities to do it. You can allow super sophisticated machine learning techniques to filter out certain information and then all the other and all the apps can kind of tie into this for their filtering. Uh, and then there's nobody really to blame, you know, you can blame the blame the third parties, I guess, but you can always move to another third party. Uh, he said, new markets are going to emerge for labels, meaning people are going to compete to label content by topic. So there's going to be competition that forms, you know, who can create the best not safe for work database so that, you know, all I want all the apps to use my my ta my labeling and mark all the stuff that I mark is not safe for work as not safe for work in their app or they I want them to mark everything I say factual as being factual in their apps or everything that's opinions to be opinions on their app. Uh, misinformation is easier and faster to, to detect because this is all open. That's some, a point that he really hit on. Also, he said that there are crypto native monetization tools. And I think everybody on DSA who's already here and been using it for a while can attest to how this is so true. Uh, On-chain content allows for money-native apps, business models based on micro fees instead of attention. Um, he said creators have multiple ways to earn, either through social tokens, NFTs, DAOs, paid DMs, crypto tipping, etc. There's you know multiple ways to earn, and there's going to be multiple more ways of to earn coming as more apps are created. And you still even have the traditional ways. You know, you can still monetize just like you do on Instagram by selling to a to a company that wants to advertise. They can, you know, pay you and you wear their line of clothing. You can still do that, but there's so many more ways to earn as well. He also talked a lot about decentralization, uh, the decentralized social being anti-fragile. This is something he's touched on a lot too. Um, so with that, uh, I want to go into uh, some of the stuff that I was talking about of how do we actually get from uh, uh, today where all the uh, activity is happening on a centralized platform to where it's happening on a decentralized blockchain, whether it's the DSO blockchain that we work on. or uh, And this is where the anti-fragile work kind of comes in. So as soon as there's a single retentive application... And I he provided the attendees that were watching him with the DSO.com domain name that he has actually provided to to the DSO community early. Uh, and he also provided that same username and password, the social layer, uh, so that they could log in, sign up for an account, and start learning about DSO and start using DSO. One thing I noticed after this speech, I, I went this morning, I went and checked. Every morning I checked to see how many new accounts are new and making their first post for the first time. And I found that there were about 63 of these accounts, which is about three times as many as I see on any other average normal day on DSO over the last couple of months. So it's having an effect. And I think this goes to show that DSO should be attending more events, as many events as they possibly can, maybe even attending events and bringing some apps along, like maybe NFTZ could come along and you know, share a booth. Maybe Pearl could do the same. Maybe Story could do the same. And I let people f like see some of the other apps in action. Yeah, and, and I, I think you got to also point out that the MetaMask integration took place last week. So some of those increase in posts might be due to that. So you can't put it all on mainnet, but mainnet obviously is a big help. And I, I can just tell that the team seems super excited. I, I know when we used to do, do these uh, conventions and we used to set up booths for our past business, you'd always come back like so optimistic because you met so many great people and you talked about partnering with so many great people and you just get a really optimistic feel about the industry. And I, I get the sense that all of the team feels this way right now. And you make great connections too. I think those connections are invaluable in so many ways. Yes. So Ash Diso made a post uh, with someone from Brave Brave Browser uh, who was wearing a Dow Dow hat. What can you tell us about that? Yeah. So yesterday, Ash Diso made a post, and it was a photo of him standing next to somebody from the Brave Browser booth. I don't know who it was. It might have been their CEO, for all I know. And I'm sorry if I'm missing that point. But they, this individual, this man, was wearing a Dow Dow hat, 
And Ash Diso, along with that photo, he said Brave Browser knows all about Diso and Dow Dow. I think it would be great to see Brave work with Diso, I think, and even Dow Dow. I think it would be it would be great to allow for MetaMask to work more efficiently on the Brave Browser. I know that some people have some, had some issues with that. I think this is why Mainnet and other events like it are so important. It allows attendees, but also other vendors to see, learn about DSO, have personal conversations with individuals from DSO so that you form those bonds. And, and I, I think those bonds with other vendors are just as important as, you know, having just attendees at these events to learn about DSO. Because oh, absolutely. Let's say, you I, know, you form a really strong uh, bond with somebody from Rarible. And you're like, wow, this guy's really cool. Let's go out for drinks after the after the show, and you know, let's let's talk about just NFTs. And then something comes up, and you're like, you know, Diso allows for social. Have you ever thought about doing anything like that? And and then maybe Rarible is not ready to do social yet on their platform, but maybe in six months from now, they're like, you know, we should really do social. How could we do this? And then, you know, one of these topics X from Rarible will be like. Well, you know, I did meet with these guys from Disa, and they seemed really cool. And they're, you know, what they're building is really, really interesting. Uh, we should really look into Disa. So I, I think those connections are so important. Absolutely, and, and and you can tell that they, by the way they're talking, I think they made a lot of great connections. Uh, so GD Virtual Galleries uh, by GDS, they're actually attending the Grammys, uh, and. They're going to have a 3D virtual fan experience at the Grammys. They it's said the that Latin they hope, Grammys. Latin Grammys. The, the, the Latin Grammys, yeah, of course, yeah. They, they said that they hope to have an opportunity to onboard some celebrities there. And that would be really awesome. I know GDS, big, big time OG. He's been, he's been working on all kinds of really cool virtual uh, metaverse type stuff, but he always remembers the DSO community and always integrates things into it. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure he's going to be doing big things. Yeah, I love GDS and everything he's doing. Uh, and yesterday, I guess it was yesterday or the day before, Dapp Radar had an article entitled Social Blockchain DSO Integrates MetaMask Enabling Seamless Social Fi. Uh, so this was an article discussing DSO. I don't know if it was a paid article. It didn't say anything about being sponsored, so I'm going to assume it wasn't but I guess it's still possible it was. It discussed how DSO is looking to drive Web3 social mass adoption. It was a very positively written article about DSO and the DSO blockchain. I think it's great to see that they're getting this media coverage. Yeah, and Dapp Radar is definitely a, a, popular, a popular media site within the crypto blockchain space. Uh, and to see this, it was very positive, uh, definitely good. And just another possible, uh, maybe maybe something that happened in response to mainnet as well. So happy to see that. Uh, so some other really big news, and that's Stargeezer. Stargeezer, a BitCloud OG, DSO OG. He is working on something amazing. And it's called Note Me. Uh, and what it does is it allows your followers to get notifications for certain content that you post. And the way it works is that a creator uh, will be able to sign up, sign in, uh, it takes less than a minute, and configure their own topic. So if Krasenstein us, we wanted to create a Note Me account, we could just sign in, and then you create the, the topics by creating hashtags for each. And maybe one would be Krasenstein, Krasenstein video, and another one could be Krasenstein weekly review, and another one could be uh, NFTZ news. And users would then be able to subscribe to each hashtag. So maybe some people only want to see posts that are related to NFTZ because they like NFTs. Maybe others want to see just our videos. They, they don't like all the other junk we post and they just want to see our daily videos. So they can subscribe to the Crash and Sign Videos hashtag. And once they do this, they will get notified and, and users can update these notification settings whenever they want. Uh, it, they have full control, but the way it works is it's an opt-in mass tag. Uh, and this is, this is Stargeezer's words I was talking this morning. The mass tag that you, you won't actually see, the bot posts a notification tagging everyone that, the, that has opt-in. And then Stargeezer says it tidies the post to leave us a slimline notification. So it doesn't show all the tags in the, in the, 
in that reply, but it actually tags you. So you're notified in your notifications that Stargazer made this post with this hashtag. Uh, and he said it cross-references the available topics and those that the users have subscribed to uh, will only be notified. Uh, there's a lot more in the works, Stargazer said this morning, uh, but he thought it was a good, way, good idea to just start by releasing this slimmed down version of it. Uh, right now, I don't think users are able to create their topics yet, but Stargazer put out an example uh, his, himself and it, it works really well. And I think this is something that I think the community will enjoy and, and learn to love. And I just subscribed to Stargazer this morning, right before this video. I love that. And I love how he's, how he's doing it through notifications. Great job. Yeah, so let's get on to the top NFT bidders over the last 24 hours, according to NFTZ. These people bid on the most DSO NFTs over the last day. That's 70s Robot, Meta Philosopher, Dragonstone, OTZ Gallery, Nordian, Pro Crusties, P Boy 17, Empowering, Rhubarb, and Night 10. And the top 10 Diamond Day creators over the last 24 hours, thanks to our friends at Alton Base, these people receive the most diamonds or tips on their posts and the replies on the DSO blockchain. Riza Bien, Gavinaja, Darmianto5, Mott Christ, Be It Me Not You, Stargeezer, AK Grass, 8889, Diciana, Goldberry and Syarf. And there's a lot of new people up there. So if I mispronounce your name, I apologize. Yeah. And welcome back to some DSO OGs who had been gone for 30 days and who have come back to take make at least one transaction on the DSO blockchain. Thanks to Open Prosper for this list. Creator Fund. Remember Creator Fund, Brian? How how much excitement that brought you, Creator Coins? Creator Fund was back. So Maybe I was actually talking to Mario last night when he signed into that account. So, <laughs> okay, so then you it. probably knew that he was creator from his back. So Michael D. Simmons, another DSO OG verified account. Uh, Hiro Yuki Terada, I remember mentioning him a lot in the past. Chi, C H I E, and Rico. Welcome back. Hopefully, you OGs are back for good. Hopefully, you don't take another prolonged break. But moving on, uh, top events. Thanks once again to Miss Katie Ann for providing us with this list. At 1 p.m. Eastern Time is the Academic Web3 Conference with Shantran on Antra. And at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Welcome Series, Maid's Affiliate Partner Training with Mariah Howard on Antra. Just go to joinantra.com, go to Miss Katie Ann's profile, get a direct link to each of these events. So when you're ready to attend, you can just go directly there. And that's all the news we have for today. Um, have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.